house. Uh, we're just going to do a worship song. It just simply says, Jehovah is your name. And while that's going on, we're going to give Bishop a few of in the house. So if you're in the house, make sure there are no empty seats between you and the person in front of you. Make sure there are no empty seats between you and the person beside you. If you're wearing your mask, you are fine. You can be a meter apart. Keep your masks on and you will be fine. I'm also going to ask if my son is at the back to just bring those curtains together. Uh, so there's a bit of view in the house from the world game online. While that is going on, we're going to be prepared. The song says, Jehovah is your name here with us. Uh, my singer is also the media person. <laughs> one of my singers, and she's just making sure everything is sorted. We're going to be going online. Uh, let me just put this precursor out. It will be live on Facebook. If you do not want your face visible on Facebook, uh, this is your time to shift your seat to one of the end seats. If you're in the middle, you will most certainly be seen. If you don't want to be seen on Facebook, move to the outer ends of the aisle because it will be going live on Facebook. Again, you repeat yourself. If you do not want to be seen on camera, if you don't want anybody on Facebook to recognize who you are, <laughs> move to one of the outer end seats. Um, okay. At this time, while we in preparation, so Bishop can see us in the house uh, this morning. How do you know? Give God praise, we give Him honor. The psalm says, "Our sister Holy, you can come up close around." The psalm says, "Jehovah is your name." We want you to right now begin to worship God. Right now, where you are, begin to raise your hands. You need to worship God. He is our King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is 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 the Lord of Lords. Begin to stir the atmosphere of worship. Begin to give it all that is to us in giving worship.
excited and happy and blessed of the Lord to be able to share with my friends all the way from the United States. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I thank God. I know that there's a little uh, technical slowdown uh, now and then, but I hope and pray that you are hearing us and that the Lord is going to work through whatever technical difficulty we might be feeling or seeing uh, in our fellowship today. I'm excited to be with you during this fourth convocation where you are celebrating an encounter with God. I give God great praise and great honor for who God is, for what God has done, and certainly for the Lord being in our lives. Thank you, thank you, Dr. King. I love you tremendously. And I pray that God will bless us to be able to have continued fellowship until the Lord comes, amen, and even into eternity. God's been good. I want to give honor to everyone, honor to all to whom honor is due, I thank God, amen, I'm grateful that you can hear me. All right, uh, I am grateful to be a part of this convocation and I honor your diocesan in his absence. Uh, we will be together further later in uh, the day, amen. I give honor to uh, your overseer and to all of the pastors and elders and evangelists and, and everyone that has helped King's Chapel to come together and celebrate during this time. Celebrate just knowing God and having an encounter with God and the fact that you have been seeking and also uh, knowing that you are consecrating is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Amen. So I praise God. I praise God for you. And I pray that the Lord will allow us to share something with you that will bless you during these times. Again, I give honor to God. I'm going to pray and then I'm going to invite you to join me in the scriptures 
and we're going to share a word with you as we pray. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth who has set thy glory above the heavens. Oh Lord, when we consider the heavens and the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars, which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him or the son of man that you visited him for you've made him a little lower than the angels and has crowned him with glory and honor. Mighty God, creator, ruler of all earth and heaven. Lord, how glorious and great you are. And we're thankful for another day's journey. You've kept us, you're keeping us. And in these times, Lord, for some which may seem distressful, we continue to love you and serve you and honor you for your goodness. And now as we prepare, Lord, to share a word with your people, we pray, God, that you would help your children to understand how wonderful you are. You are wonderful in all that you are, awesome in all that you do, magnificent in how you remain with us. And in this day, we honor you for this is a day to give you praise. Lord, we pray that you use us as a vessel of thy to speak a word to your people that someone may hear and cry out, what must I do to be saved? And God, if we can be used as that vessel to share a word with them, we pray, God, that you use us to your glory and to your honor. In Jesus' blessed name, I pray, amen and amen. I want to invite you to join me in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, the fifth chapter of First Thessalonians. And in chapter five, I'm going to read three verses of scripture. Verse 16, 17, and 18. And then I'm going to share the thought that the Lord has laid upon my heart. Verse 16 of chapter five of First Thessalonians reads, Rejoice evermore. Verse 17, pray without ceasing. And my thought, which is found in this 18th verse, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you, concerning you. And the thought that I want to share with you today, very simple yet so needed, just tell the Lord, thank you. Just tell the Lord, thank you. You know, the church at Thessalonica is a church that has a tremendous history, a tremendous history. The letter that was written to the saints or the church in Thessalonica was a letter that was sent by the apostle we call Paul. He sent it through his son, Timothy. He called Timothy his son in the faith. We often call Timothy his son in the gospel. And Timothy is the messenger who is bringing a message to a people during that time, delivered by Timothy to the saints in Thessalonica. And it's written to a specific population of individuals. 
primarily in the church at Thessalonica. This was a Gentile population, primarily. And the reason I know is that the scripture tells us in the second chapter of this epistle that they had become followers. And I want to read that verse in chapter 2 and verse 14. It says, for ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which is in, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. So what we learn is that primarily the population was a Gentile population, but it was a population that had been through some struggles. They had been through some difficulties. Yet, as we read through both epistles, the first epistle and the second epistle of Thessalonians, what we discover is that they became known for their faith and their charity. In 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter and the third verse, it says, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is me, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you, every one of you all toward each other abounded. So basically what the apostle was saying is, I know you're a Gentile group and I know that you've had your struggles. I know that you have been persecuted. I know you've had great difficulty, but I also know that in the midst of every difficulty, you have proven yourself faithful and you have proven yourself to be a people of putting your love in action because that's what charity is all about. And so what we learn from the saints in this particular place is that even though there will come times when we are faced with difficulties, adversities, and times when the enemy will struggle against us, we must always remember to just tell God thank you in spite of it all. And so by the time he gets to this fifth chapter of this first epistle and the three verses that I have read to you, 16, 17 and 18 of chapter five. He says, rejoice, pray and give thanks. What better way could we encounter God and come away knowing that we have been tremendously blessed than to put all of that together? Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing and give the Lord thanks. Give the Lord thanks. Today, it is important and imperative to us to understand that regardless to what's going on in society and all around the world, and we could name all of the difficulties, we could name all of the things that we have uh, been faced with during this pandemic, uh, during a time when we have not been able for a period of time to come together and fellowship the way that we desired. But look at what the Lord has done. Even when we could not come together and physically touch one another, the Lord has blessed tremendously in that the churches, people in the churches, people in the ministries began to scramble to find ways technically to get together so that I can sit in the United States of America, and you can sit over in Ashford, the United Kingdom, and we can fellowship together on us. For me, an early Sunday morning, and for you, perhaps just a few hours later in your day, 
but I praise God that we are able to come together and thanks and, and, and give thanks to God for being able to fellowship, being able to come together. We may not have tried to do it as quickly, but for the pandemic, but thank God in everything, give thanks. And so as I move forward with this, what I want you to understand is that regardless to uh, our circumstances, it is always important to us to thank God for all things at all times. We need to remain thankful regardless of how you are faced with whatever you are faced with. It is important to the people of God to be thankful. Life will bring you some experiences. The church at Thessalonica had some experiences, but they learned through their experiences to thank God always. Today, in our Christian walk, in our Christian living, we learn that these experiences are very much an equal opportunity giver. It doesn't matter who we are, where we live, where we've come from, life's experiences are going to touch each of us. And when it does, we have to determine how we respond to those experiences. What I have learned is that life's experiences foster our testimonies. It gives us something to testify about. And know this, that regardless to the experience, at the end of the day, when we look back over everything we've been through, we can become thankful because God who allowed us to go in it is the same God that brought us out. Oh, yes. And understand, we have something to be thankful for. The experience, for some of us, the experience is a test. The experience is a trial. The experience is what you are dealing with, what you go through. But it comes unto us as a learning curve. It's a short path to a place where we learn to thank God for the experience. Experience provides great lessons and lessons are to be learned. And what do we learn? We learn to pray, rejoice, and give thanks. Now understand, no one in his or her right mind wants to seek out a trial or a test. But as a people of God, because we are tested, we learn to be thankful. And we learn that we have yeah. a reason to testify because we've been through something. Every child of God's testimony ought to include a thank you because of what yeah. you've learned in your test and yeah. in your trial. Now. How do we get to the place that we can thank God? It begins with belief. Belief in a yes. God who is able to do abundantly, exceeding oh, everything God. that yeah. we can ask or think. Learn to believe him. Yeah. Belief in the Lord, first of all, is conceived in the heart. It's confessed yes. through the mouth. It constrains you by the spirit yes. and it's confirmed in your holy living. Amen. Yes. Some will select and some will reject. But it is important to us to be on the selecting side and know that a faithful God 
remains true to his word. And because God is true to his word, we can and will believe and know that God who speaks is a God who will do it. I heard Apostle McIntosh say yesterday that God's already done it. I looked at the theme. The theme says, it shall be done. And the reason we know that it shall be done is because we believe. I read a poem one time that was written in a certain uh, Christian magazine. And what this particular poem said is that we cannot allow our doubts to cause us not to believe. We want to believe to the extent that we can thank God for everything in spite of anything. Doubt looks at obstacles, but faith sees the way. Doubt looks at darkness, but faith sees the day. Doubt won't let you step out, but faith will send you soaring on high. Doubt will ask the question, who believes that? But faith will say, it's a (laughs) hallelujah. You've got to believe that God is working it out. And if you believe that God is working it out, There's your reason right there for telling God, thank you, in spite of everything. Now, let me tell you some steps when it comes to being able to thank God. Let's look at the anatomy of this. When we talk about anatomy, anatomy is the structure of, or the science of, the shape and structure of an organism and its parts. Now, as a people of God, we have an anatomy. And in our anatomy, we learn how to give God thanks. Now you might say, what do you mean? This is what I'm saying. We give God thanks with our heart, with our mouth, with our hands and with our feet. With everything that is within us, we give God thanks. Let's look at the anatomy of it. How is my heart going to give God thanks? Well, with my heart, I can be sincere. My heart, the Bible tells us, should be fixed on God. The psalmist said, my heart is fixed on thee, O God. My heart is fixed. A heart that is fixed on God is a heart that is sober. It's a heart that is serious. It's a heart that may have been through some difficult times and some trials and, uh, you know, but that heart that is fixed on God is a heart that comes out sincerely trusting God in spite of it all believing God in spite of it all, loving God in spite of it all. A heart that is fixed on God is a heart that is pure. It's a heart that doesn't mind being contrite or being broken or yielding unto God. And so that part of our anatomy with the heart, we thank God and we praise God and we allow God to be lifted up because our heart is in tune with God. We understand that God reforms us through our heart and God uh, refreshes us through our heart. God renews us through our heart. Isn't this what uh, the psalmist said, creating me a clean heart because he wanted to be renewed and he wanted to be rebuilt and he wanted to be rejuvenated and regenerated and made 
over. And so that part of his anatomy, he had to yield his heart to God. And in order to give God the proper thing, our heart, our heart has got to be in tune with God. But not only is our heart got to be connected with God, but the part of our anatomy that we call our mouth, that vocal part of you, that part has to learn to lift your voice and speak out and uh, bless God. And, you know, in spite of your circumstance, you've got to learn to use your mouth to bless God and, and, and give God praise and tell God, I love you. I adore you. I thank you. I bless you. I praise you. I serve you. I lift you. And do as the psalmist says, let the words of your mouth and the meditation of your heart be acceptable unto God. And then with the other part of amen, our, enemy, amen, our hands, amen, amen, yes, these hands, yes. amen, these hands, we, we learn to praise God with our hands. Our hands are used to labor. They're used to perform. And with the hands, we can give God praise. Why do you think the psalmist, amen, and the word of God speaks about clapping your hands, amen? Because when you clap your hands, a clap, I told the people of God at my home church that a clap for God is a slap at the devil. And if you keep clapping for God and clapping to God, then you keep slapping at the devil because you're giving God praise with every part of your anatomy. And as you praise him, you are thanking him. How else, amen, can we thank God? We can use our feet, amen, the feet of an individual who loves the Lord and who is thanking God, the feet of a child of God, a saint of God, keeps walking in paths that are right, amen. The feet of God's people are set, amen, upon a rock and set on a firm foundation and placed in a place where God shows you, amen, that you have liberty in him. The feet of a child of God, amen, will tread on the enemy's head and stamp and stamp on, uh, stomp on uh, the enemy and stomp on the devil because the feet of a child of God that praises God will let every individual know that you are walking in a path of right. And so through your anatomy, through your heart, through your hand, through your feet, you keep on giving God thanks because God is great and greatly to be praised. We thank him for his goodness. Thank him for his greatness. Thank him for his majesty. This is the kind of encounter that we ought to walk with God. Thank him for his excellence. Thank him for his, amen, goodness toward us. Thank him for his mercy extended toward us. Thank him for his grace and mercy. Thank him, amen, for his kindnesses and thank him for his deliverance and Thank him for the wonderful works that he has wrought in our lives. Thank him for the times that he has helped us through times when we needed to be helped and couldn't find help anywhere else. Thank him for the wisdom that he gives us. Thank him for his might and his strength that he uses to help us through every test and every trial. Thank him because he is a sovereign God. Thank him, amen, as David praised him for his goodness. Thank him for his goodness. Thank him as Mary praised him for his great things that he had done unto her. Thank him for his greatness. Thank him as Daniel praised him for bringing him out of the lion's den. Thank him, amen, for bringing you out of difficult situations. Thank him. For the, and like the angels, amen, who are constantly singing holy unto the Lord. Thank him because he is holy and he's making you holy. Thank him as a disciple of God for the miraculous things that he's done. Now, what you've got to do is get yourself in a position to give him thanks. 
for all things. In everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. Get yourself in position to thank him for everything. Start planning ahead of time to give him thanks. Amen. When you go into your situation, go in it with a thanks. So if you go in it with a thank you, then you can come out of it with a thank you. Plan ahead to say thank you to God. Say an amen in the middle of your circumstance, in the middle of your trouble, in the middle of your trial. Keep on telling God thanks, no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through. Learn how to tell God thanks. If you tell God thanks, you'll have an awesome encounter with God. God loves to be thanked. God loves to be praised. God loves to be lifted up. He said, if we do that, amen. He said, if I'm, li if I'm lifted, I'll draw all unto me. You've got to be determined to say it in everything at all times. That means don't leave anything uh, out. Don't leave any time out, amen. At all times, in all things, amen. Thank him for it all, amen. Make it your mantra. Thank you, Lord. When you go to bed at night, turn over in your bed and tell God, thank you. When you get up in the morning, amen, tell God, thank you, amen. When you confront your challenges, tell the Lord, thank you. Oh, God, hallelujah, amen. Don't you know your thank you will confuse the enemy? Because the enemy thought that he could hold you down and hold you back. He thought that he could stop your praise and your testimony. But every time he hears you saying, thank you, Lord, he can't figure out what's wrong with you. Why are you thanking God? Well, the enemy doesn't seem to know like you know just how good God's been to you. When you have a personal testimony that God's been good to you, you can tell God, thank you all by yourself, all for yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. Confront every challenge with a thank you. Amen. Confront everything in your life with a thank you. Tell God thank you. Amen. In spite of dark days, in spite of sick days, tell God thank you. Amen. Because a thank you to God will bring you peace of mind. A Thank you to the Lord and will build up joy in your heart. A thank you to the Lord and will dry your tears even when you feel like crying a river. Oh, yes, it will. Amen. Learn to be thankful. Tell God thank you for everything that God's done. When you think of his goodness, when you think of your testimony, when you think of the trial that he's bringing you through, tell God thank you. Just tell God thank you. Just get to the thank you. Don't dwell on the wrong. Don't dwell, amen, on the difficulty. Don't dwell on the situation, but begin to give God a thank you. Amen. Your outlook on life ought to be, Lord, I thank you. Amen. Understanding that God can deliver from whatever you need deliverance from. Amen. God will take dope. Amen. From the drug addict. God will take alcohol from the alcoholic. God will take whoredom from the whoremonger. Yes, God will, because he's that kind of a God, and he'll replace it with a testimony. Give God thanks. He said in everything, at all times, give God thanks. Thank God for the miracles. Thank God for the awesomeness of being God. Thank God uh, for just knowing that he's God. Uh, thank God uh, for letting you get close to understanding uh, who God is uh, and what God is able to do. Uh, thank God uh, for knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, thank God uh, for knowing what Jesus can do in your life. Uh, thank God. Uh, for understanding, huh? amen, huh? ah, what the word of God says about him, huh? thank God huh? for having him in your heart, huh? thank God huh? for having him in your life, huh? thank 
God, for knowing that in spite of everything, it is the Lord and the Lord's mercies why we have not been consumed. Thank God, because God is great. Thank God that there is none like him. Thank God that you come to know him. Thank God for the encounter. Thank God that for being able, amen, to stand in the face of adversity and say, through it all, I rejoice. Through it all, I give thanks. Through it all, I have not stopped praying. Through it all, I have not stopped glorifying him. He is worthy of all praise. I thank him because he's brought me through this and that. He's brought me and I thank him in everything. I'm giving thanks. Thank him because he supplies. Thank him because he provides. Thank him because he feeds you. Thank him because he makes ways for you. Thank him because you know you don't deserve it. But God, being God, continues to do these things for us. And we ought to thank him. So when you think about what it is that you want to do and that you ought to do, just remember this one thing. Just tell God thank you. Amen. Just tell him thank you. Oh, yes. You haven't had the kind of, amen, you haven't had the, the kind of relationship with God that you will have until you learn to tell God thank you. Amen. When you thank God, you're giving God something that makes God continue to give you more. As you thank him, he will send blessings upon blessings in your life because you are showing gratitude unto him. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. And when you show appreciation to God, then God Amen. Is more than willing to give you what you ask. Amen. You can ask it in his name. You can know that he's going to give it. And when he gives it, you tell him, thank you. Oh, yes. This thing just keeps going round and round. I thank him. He blesses me. I thank him. He makes a way for me. I thank him. He opens doors. I thank him. I get closer to him. I thank him. We have a better relationship. I thank him. He just keeps on doing great things for me. As I listened to the beginning of this worship service, because that's what it is, I heard the song say, bow down and worship him. How can you worship him without thanking him? How can you worship him without showing gratitude to him? How can you worship him without appreciating what the Lord has done? Oh, yes, it shall be done. It's already done. It shall be done. God's already set it in motion. God's already planned it. God's already worked it out. And because of it, we tell God, thank you. So just tell God, thank you. Stay encouraged. Keep on believing God. Keep on holding on to God's word and just remember, tell God in spite of anything and everything, just tell God, thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, Dr. King. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your good. Thank you.
We have an ordination service tonight, which will be facilitated by the diocesan or the or diocesan bishop, Bishop C. Wayne Brantley. He will also be our speaker for this evening. And we want to bless God for him and thank God for the word that we've already received. We don't know what he's going to say yet, but it's going to be in alignment with the word of God, with the will of God. And it will be what we need exactly for our lives. And so we thank you, God, by faith. Amen. At this time, as the musicians continue to play, I'm looking at the clock. I tell you, I just want to worship God, but we got to get out of here. Isn't it wonderful? We know that when we get into heaven, we will not be restricted by time because we'll be in eternity. We can just worship God. <laughs> oh, what a time. What a good time we truly get over young at this time. I'm going to ask for. Oh, come on, sister, I'm going to work you this morning. Oh, it's going to be but well, we can't close without asking, is there anybody who needs prayer before we go? Before Sister Joyce comes to dismiss us in prayer, is there anyone who needs prayer? I know you didn't hear me, you're something like this. <laughs> That's all right, you're giving God thanks. Is there anyone, okay, we have, is there anyone indicating online for prayer at this time? So we're being in person. If there's no one, then we are gonna go forward in thanksgiving, giving, giving God all the thanks for what he has already done, both in our past and in our future. I know that might sound confusing to you, but let me say it again. We're going to go ahead and give God thanks for what he's already done in our past, what he's already done in our future. The things that we have not yet got a hold of, they have not yet been manifested in our life, but we know. Hallelujah, that it's already done, amen. amen. But this time, Sister Joyce is coming. She's going to close us out in prayer. And she's going to also give us our benediction, which is taken from the book of Jude. It's one chapter in Jude, it's verses 24 and 25. So if you don't know it, you can grab your Bible and then we can go through with her. For those of you who are joining us online, for those of you who are watching us on Facebook, we just want to take this opportunity to thank you for partnering with us throughout this service. And we invite you back, if you can, Come and join us at 7 p.m. or time, 2 p.m. if you're in the States and, and further and other areas. Come and join us, 7 p.m. here, where we'll be closing out with the last leg of our God Encounter Convocation for 2021. We know that we will indeed be blessed. We are blessed already, but there's more yet to come. God bless you. This is a joy at this time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us just praise the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We bless your name, God. Let's just honor him. Let's just give him praise and thanks. Because he is worthy, he is worthy, he is worthy. Let us continue to say thank you, God. Thank you, God. We thank you, God, for all that you do for us. We thank you, God, for your many blessings. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come to your throne of grace right now, Father God to find favor in your sight. God, we thank you and we bless your name. We honor you and we magnify your name, Father God, for there is none like you. There is none like you, God. We could search throughout this whole world and find none like you. So, Lord, we say thank you and we bless your name. We glorify you, God. Precious are you, God, in our sight. Father, we thank you and we magnify your name. Lord, we thank you for this awesome time that we have had in your presence today, oh God. Oh, Lord, where else would we go and be so blessed and, and so at peace with you, Father God? We thank you because we know that you have been with us. You have sat with your people. You have bowed your head, Father God, knowing that we have come. We have come and we have worshipped you in spirit and in truth. So, Father God, we say, blessed be your holy name this morning. We give you thanks and we give you praise. We thank you, Lord God, that as we depart from here, Lord God, it is just for a moment because we shall be back again. Again, to sing in your praises, to thank you, God, for all that you do for us, to honor you and to bless your holy name. For God, you are worthy, and there's none like you in all the earth. Father, we thank you, we bless your name. Father, give us journey mercies as we go wherever we're going right now. We know that you will be with us. Give us your peace, Father God, that surpasses all human understanding. Hallelujah. Be with us, O oh God. Yes, we Lord. praise your name, we bless you, and we honor you. Yes, Worthy are you, Lord God, to receive all honor and glory and praise. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now on to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present to all bless and all bless glory with exceeding joy. 